Hi, how are you? My name is Robert, and from now on I thank you for watching this video, in which I am going to discuss some aspects related to the correct installation and verification of the Fluke 435 Series 2 Power Quality Analyzer. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. In my previous video about the Power Quality Analyzer Fluke 435 Series 2, we reviewed how to properly configure the analyzer. Now is the time to take action and start taking measurements and saving a record. But, to avoid getting an unpleasant surprise later when we analyze the data, we are going to see some aspects related to the physical installation of the analyzer, and how to verify that we have not made mistakes. First of all, I suggest downloading and saving all the records made previously, so we will avoid any problem with the data and we will have the maximum memory capacity on the instrument. Verify that the equipment is perfectly configured, for this you can see my video on how to use the setup key. Verify the type of system where you are going to measure, the nominal voltage and frequency, the correct selection and configuration of the probes and the electric quality standard, and although it seems silly, do not forget to verify that the date and time are correct. Check that you have all the elements and that they are in good condition. The test lead should not have any cuts or defects that could affect your safety. Check that the equipment has the sticker with the colors for the electrical connections according to your country, and make sure that the cables have colored plastic markers for an easy identification. If you haven't put them in, put them in now, that will avoid confusing the cables. If you are measuring on thick cables or copper bus bars, the included alligator clips are a good way to connect the voltage measurement cables. If you are going to measure in a small electrical cabinet, where there is little space, I suggest you get a set of magnetic tips that you can insert into the screws of the protections, they have a magnet strong enough to make a good electrical contact. Once you are in front of the electrical panel, protect yourself with the appropriate PPE. Above all do not trust yourself, that's a typical mistake if you have been doing this for years. Don't run, you know the saying that goes, dress me slowly, I'm in a hurry. And, better safe than sorry. First. Install the current probes on the cables and look at the arrow that is printed on them, which should point towards the loads. If you put them pointing towards the transformer, the power and energy associated with that phase will surely come out with a negative sign, which makes the total power and energy incorrect. Verify that their hooks are properly closed. Next, install the voltage cables, starting with the earth cable and then with a the neutral, phase 1, 2 and 3 depending on the type of system chosen. Use the crocodiles or magnetic tips and ensure a solid fixation. It is very important in this equipment to always have the earth cable connected. Before finishing the installation, check the wiring again. In the event that we are going to do a long registration, it will be convenient to connect the power supply to the equipment. Once this is done, we can turn on the equipment and verify that the screen actually shows that the analyzer is powered from the mains, in this way we will avoid discharging the internal battery and stopping the recording. Sometimes, despite being careful, we make mistakes in the connections, so it is important to carry out the following verification process. Let's first inspect the phaser diagram. To do this, once the instrument is on, we press the scope key and select the F3 key to display the phaser diagram, which in my case corresponds to a three-phase star system with neutral grounded. In this diagram we can see the voltage phasers represented with thick arrows, and the current phasers represented with thinner arrows. The phasers associated with each phase, will have a color according to the color system selected in the user preferences menu. If we imagine the phaser diagram as the face of a clock, the voltage phaser of phase 1 is taken as a reference, and it is oriented at 3 o'clock. The voltage phaser for phase 2 should be located around 7 o'clock. And finally, the voltage phaser for phase 3 around 11. The current phaser should be more or less close to the voltage ones depending on the cosine of phi of each phase. The sequence of phases can be visualized by imagining that these vectors rotate counterclockwise. In an inductive installation, for example with motors, the current phasers are delayed in time with respect to the voltage ones. In a capacitive installation, for example with computers, the current vectors will be ahead of the voltage. Now let's look at the colors that appear in the upper bar of the display. In my case it appears, black for phase 1 red for phase 2 and gray for phase 3, and that is precisely the same sequence of colors that the voltage and current phasers considering counterclockwise rotation, starting from phase 1. This is a good sign of a correct installation of the analyzer. 
Likewise, we can see that the current vectors are relatively close to the corresponding voltage vectors, as indicated, depending on the cosine of phi of each phase, but always forming an angle of less than 90 degrees. This is also a good sign of a correct installation of the analyzer. Now it is time to simulate two typical failures. Suppose that we have made a mistake when placing the voltage cables, and we have exchanged two phases, for example phase 2 and phase 3. Now we can see that the voltage phaser pointing at 7 is gray, and the one pointing at 11 is red. Therefore, we see that the sequence of colors given by the reference of the bar in the upper part of the screen is not fulfilled. Likewise, we see that it is now possible to have an angle greater than 90 degrees between the voltage and current vectors of the exchanged phases. These two situations give us an indication that something is wrongly connected. Let's swap voltage cables 2 and 3 back as they were at the beginning. Now suppose that we exchange two current probes, for example 2 and 3. The situation repeats itself, but this time, with the current phasers. The current phaser pointing at 7 o'clock is gray and the one pointing at 11 o'clock is red, contradicting the sequence of the color bar at the top of the screen. Likewise, the angles between the voltage and current phasers, of phases 2 and 3, can now exceed 90 degrees. Again, these two situations give us an indication that something is wrongly connected. Let's swap current probes 2 and 3 back as they were at the beginning. This was the first typical failure, exchanging two voltage probes, or two current probes. Let's now look at a second error. What happens if we connect a current probe with the arrow pointing in the direction of the transformer, instead of pointing towards the loads? Take for example the probe from phase 1 and make the change. As we can see, the current phaser now points practically at 9 o'clock. It is out of phase about 180 degrees with respect to the voltage phaser. This is again an indication of a bad connection, in this case the direction of the current probe. But before putting it back on correctly, we are going to go to the power menu. For this, we press the menu key and with the down arrow we select power and energy and press enter. As we can see in the first line, the active power of phase 1 appears negative, while in phases 2 and 3 the active powers are positive. If we place now the probe of phase 1 correctly, that is, with its silk screened arrow pointing to the loads, we will see that the active power of phase 1 becomes positive. And if we return to the phaser diagram we will see that now the current phaser points again around 3 o'clock. It is possible to make more than one fault simultaneously, which will undoubtedly complicate this type of analysis. Therefore, try to avoid mistakes by properly marking the cables at both ends with the colored markers and pay a little attention to the installation of the cables and probes, in this way we will avoid an unpleasant surprise that could ruin the registry and waste valuable time. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation, that I hope has been of interest for you. As I said at the beginning, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you have found this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. In the next video I will talk about something also very interesting. The two types of recording modes that this analyzer provides and, in particular, I will focus on the automatic recording. Leaving the logger record mode for a next video. So if you don't want to miss it, do not forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Please, do not forget to send me your suggestions for new videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon.